Hello, dear viewers. Today, we're going to be talking about the terrorist attacks that have occurred in the last few months in Kashmir and what they tell us about the security situation in Kashmir. So in Kashmir, a few days ago, there were terrorist attacks in an area called Rajori. About some people were shot and uh, they later and IED blew up and killed uh, one person. And I think yesterday or today, another person succumbed to injuries. So totally seven people have died. This comes on the back of several other terrorist attacks that have occurred in the last few months, targeting uh, Kashmiri pundits and Kashmiri Hindus and also uh, non-Kashmiri Hindus, migrants and workers, etc. I want to talk about how terrorism is being handled in Kashmir, what the security situation is, and how the government can find a political solution to the situation there. Let's begin. What rocked Jammu and Kashmir in the first two days of the new year? Four people were killed on Sunday, uh, which and suspected terrorist firing. In, as I spoke talking about and the next day a child died in an IED blast there was also a grenade attack in Srinagar the IED blast took place near the house of the first firing incident so we can see that these attacks were coordinated and part of a similar operation fortunately uh, the army has killed two of the militants who were involved in the attack these were the terrorists involved in the hungry attack and that operations to nab these terrorists continue not all of them have been nabbed yet and i'm sure the uh, army will either arrest or kill all of them and the death toll in the incident has risen to seven after one more civilian succumbed to injuries in the terrorist attacks in Dangri. This uh, last year, 172 terrorists were killed in over 90 operations in the Kashmir Valley in the year 2022. 42 were foreign terrorists, mostly belonging to Pakistan. And the Kashmir police also pointed out that there was a decline in the number of youths joining the terror outfits in the valley. According to data, there is a decline of around 37% in recruitment in terror organizations. Uh, the police chief also said that 146 Pakistan created terror modules comprising four to five members each were busted in 2022. 100 youths joined terrorism in JK this year, which is the lowest in many years, uh, which corroborates with the 37% reduction that I sp uh, spoke about earlier. A majority of them were eliminated while security forces are working to bring down the number of active terrorists to a two digit figure which is presently a little more than 100. Now the terrorism in Kashmir is sponsored by Pakistan. So we need to look at the infiltration that has been occurring from Pakistan and see whether it's reduced. This is information from the government. This is old information from 1st December 2021, but I could not find more recent. So I'm using this. To in 2018, the estimated net infiltration was 143, and in 2019, it was similar, 141. 2020, it reduced to 51, which is a great reduction, and in 2018, it continued to reduce to 28, and the number of terrorist incidents reduced from 417 in 2018 to 200 in 2021. So, this is a great improvement and shows that uh, India has improved borders uh, security and that fact that the reduction from two, 2019 to 2021 is so great shows that the removal of article 370 has had a great effect on 
the uh, army's uh, strength in fighting terrorism. So this is the state that India is with respect to uh, countering terrorism from Pakistan. It has, uh, we've been successful in reducing the infiltration, but it's still continuing. And I think that the government must support the army in its efforts to bring terrorist infiltrations in India to zero, hopefully within the next two years. If we can completely stop terrorists from coming from Pakistan into Kashmir, it'll be much easier for us to uh, stop terrorism within Kashmir because our forces won't be distracted by trying to fight terrorism on the border and within. So this is the military situation. Now I want to talk about the uh, terrorist attacks. On October 28, 2022, this article was published in The Hindu, which talks about various attacks on Kashmiri pundits, one in South Kashmir, and six pundits have been uh, killed this year in targeted attacks. This is despite assurances from the government on communities' protection, the recurring attacks have increased its sense of fear with several families having fled the valley. This is repeated in another article where 10 Kashmiri Pandit families have left villages days after killing a community member by terrorists. However, some people like the Hindu argue that the attacks and killing suggest the failure of the union government's decisions uh, that I lose in Article 317 and bifurcation of JFK in arresting the trend of violence. But this is not true, as we can see that the number of infiltrations into Kashmir have reduced, number of terrorist attacks in JNK have reduced. And so militarily, the situation has improved and uh, bringing the, gov the state government under the union government by making the union territory has helped. But it's the situation has not completely become perfect. There's still going to be have be work to be done. We don't need to discourage the army and the government for its activity. We just need to push them to do more. To talk about the Kashmiri pundits themselves, we need to, as a country, allow them to resettle. So because they were exiled and. Uh, from Kashmir in 1990 and uh, they have not it's not been safe for them to return since so we need to make sure that they're able to go back to their homes here we can see since the last six months employees have not reported to their respective places of posting due to the targeted killings of their loved ones and all these employees have been appointed under the PM package since 2010 and have served in the valley and reportedly never faced apprehensions of threat and warnings. The targeted killings of minorities happened post abrogation when violence was taking a different turn in Kashmir. I guess this means that although terrorist attacks were more frequent before the revocation of Article 370, they were not targeting the minorities. They were targeting uh, Kashmiri Muslims and mainly the security forces. That has reduced. And now that because of that, the militants are going after soft targets, such as civilians. And also they're afraid of Hindus uh, settling in Kashmir because they want Kashmir to be a Muslim majority uh union territory and are not going to don't want hindus to come which is ironic because originally it was a hindu majority region 
before Muslims invaded and with each and as time went on they exiled and genocided more and more Hindus until all of them left. The delimitation exercise and special photo electoral role in Jammu Kashmir has completed. With this, the first ever assembly elections to the Union Territory are likely to be held in March to April this year. Uh, this is the first ever assembly elections in the Union Territory. Of course, when it was a state, it had bigger assembly elections. So please don't think that this is the first assembly election ever in Jammu and Kashmir. It is not. The JMK BJP General Secretary Ashok Kohl said the Election Commission has completed its arrangements, including revision of photo electoral law. And he says it is expected the assembly polls will be held after winter. The polls may be held in March to April. Uh, so I'm glad that we might see uh, democracy truly return to Kashmir because that will give people uh, an outlet to express their ideas and views. They've uh, been people getting to invite terrorism for mainly for due to religious hatred of Hindus and uh, India as a whole, but also some of them just get into it because they don't have options for their own growth, their own economic prosperity, and so are lured by in financial incentives to join terrorists. Economic development is important, which is why last year, on the 4th of October, Amit Shah, the Union Home Minister, inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of 263 development projects worth 1,960 crores in Jammu, which will give more impetus to the social and economic development of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And on the 5th of October, he inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of 240 development projects worth about 2,000 crores in Srinagar. So this shows that things are improving, that their government is interested, focused on economic development, and that can really, that can be a great way for peace to return. Now, of course, the situation in Kashmir is not going to be resolved just by economic development and just by having elections. Ultimately, it is a religious issue with Kashmiri Muslims uh, being radicalized and uh, being turned against Hindus, Sikhs and other non-Muslims. They don't want them in their state, although that is completely unlawful. Every Indian citizen has a right to travel wherever they want in whichever state irrespective of their religion and Kashmiri Muslims themselves can travel to and live in any other state in India with, um, in, even though those states are majority non-Muslims so they should not have any uh, problem with non-Muslims coming to Jammu and Kashmir so that is a completely hypocritical demand of theirs and it's not but uh, demand from all Kashmiri Muslims, but only from the Hurriyat and uh, the terrorists. And also they're supported by Pakistan, who ironically warns of democratic change. So uh, I've spoken about this in the past when talking about the movie The Kashmir Files, which shows the, the religious cleansing that occurred in uh, against the Kashmiri Pandits. You'll see uh, links to videos for that on the screen. So, uh, one, the radicalization amongst the Kashmiri Muslims has to be stopped. How that can happen is by uh, getting uh, moderate Muslims to debate the more radical Muslims that have not the ones that have joined terrorists, but the peaceful ones, ones that remain peaceful. If they can debate them and defeat them in debates, show them why uh, hardline Islam is not good, then this can make Muslims more moderate and 
This will make the situation safer for non-Muslims. And uh, if more Hindus do go to Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, it will force the locals to interact with Hindus, to learn about them, to become more tolerant towards them. And ultimately, I think India will have to declare that it is a Hindu nation and that it's going to protect Hindus and Sikhs, Buddhists and Jains. And so attacks on these communities will not at all be tolerated. This will really discourage any terrorists. And uh, Hinduism being a tolerant, accepting, pluralistic faith, which will accept Islam, which will, if it's promoted, it will make Muslims actually closer to India. They'll uh, understand that they as Kashmiri Muslims and Indian Muslims in general are not the same as Muslims in other countries and should adopt Hindu values and become more Hindu. And yeah, it'll increase and improve uh, relations between the two religious communities, which will uh, in at the national level and which will seep into state politics, including in Kashmir. And yeah, so ultimately, it's going to be a long process, which will involve the government, the military, uh, NGO, social activists and ordinary citizens. But I am confident that someday there will be peace in Kashmir. If not today, definitely, but and definitely not tomorrow, but maybe in the next 10 years and or 20 years, the conflict will end. And now with Pakistan being uh, very absorbed with its own civil problems, it's a good time for India to focus on uh, making sure security is strong in Kashmir and uh, to make sure that we have, we completely eliminate terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. I'm ho hopeful for that in the new near future. And yeah, that's what I want to say. And I just want to wish good luck to our brave Indian army soldiers. If you liked that video and want to see other videos about nationalism in India with respect to current events, click here. If you want to see my previous video, click here. If you want to see the sources I use for this video, click the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Vande Matar.